Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve a problem from this morning's leak code contest operations on trees. Now this I would say is a difficult problem because it is quite an essay and it's really easy to make a incorrect assumption or make a mistake reading it. So I would say don't make any assumptions when reading this problem. Now the first thing they say is we're given a tree and down below in the example they'll show a tree that looks like this, right? And it looks like a binary tree and you might assume that the structure of the tree is always going to be the same, but it's not. And notice how they don't even anywhere in the description say that it's a binary tree. That means it could not necessarily be a binary tree, right? It could be some kind of crazy tree. But they do tell us that the root is always going to be zero and the root is never going to have a parent which makes sense, right? So we wanna design a data structure that supports three main operations. We can lock a node. The lock operation I would say is pretty straightforward. We can only lock a node if the node is already unlocked. And when we do lock a node, it's locked by a specific user. So then when we wanna unlock a node, we can only unlock a node or basically only that same user who locked the node originally is allowed to unlock the node now. So let's keep that in mind. But these two operations are actually pretty straightforward to implement the confusion comes from the upgrade operation so basically we're given another node and we're given a another user so when we do an upgrade operation on a particular node given a particular user we can only perform this operation if that node is currently unlocked because we are going to lock the node now with this user so we can only do it if the node is unlocked that's number one and another thing we're going to do with this operation is unlock all of the descendants of this node, regardless of which user locked them, right? We're just going to unlock every descendant of this node, but we're only going to be able to do this operation if at least one descendant was locked by some user, right? Any user, but at least one descendant has to be locked. Now for a given node, what is a descendant? You might have forgotten. Let's say this is a node, basically any node that is, you know, descends from this uh, this node, right? Anything that's a child or a grandchild or something like that, right? It has to be below this node. And last but not least, and this might be confusing for you, basically we can also only perform this operation, this upgrade operation, if and only if this node that we're given does not have any locked ancestors. What is an ancestor? Basically, you know, let's say you have a node. Yes, it has some children and some grandchildren and whatnot, but it also has a parent, right? This node has a parent and that node has a parent and that node has a parent, right? Basically, if you follow the links of the parents, we're saying that along all those parents, right? None of them are locked. So we'll have to check that as well before we actually perform this operation. So we'll have to make three checks. These can't be locked and at least one of these has to be locked and the actual given node that we're given, right? That particular input perimeter, this node also has to not be locked. So to put it more simply, starting at the node that we're given, this and all of this and all of its descendants have to not be locked. And uh, when I said descendants, I'm ancestors and uh, the descendants of this node, at least one of them has to be locked. So it's really two things that we're checking. None of these are locked. At least one of these are locked. And the actual modifications we're going to be making to the tree are locking this node and unlocking any of the descendants that are locked. And by the way, for convenience, we are given a parent array where for every particular node, this array will point to that node's parent, right? So it'll be easy for us to go up that chain of parents, right? That'll be really easy for us to write in code because we're given this parent array. But what about going to the children? That's not going to be so easy. So we'll actually have to build our children array by ourselves, right? Basically for any node, we want to have a list of all of its children. That's what, something that we can implement ourselves and it's not too difficult. So the overall time complexity for lock and unlock, they're just going to be O of one operations. I think that's pretty straightforward and it'll be more straightforward when you look at the code. Now the upgrade operation, the worst case it's going to be, I believe is going to be uh, O of N because for a node, uh, we're going to have to go through all of its descendants, right? What if we're given the root node, then we have to go through all of the descendants of the root node, which means we have to go through all of the nodes in the entire tree. So that's going to be O of N, but that's not too bad. Now, without further ado, let's jump into the code because I don't want this video to be super long. 
Uh, I don't want it to be as long as this essay that we had to read to just understand the problem. Okay, so now let's get into the code. And as you can see, I pretty much did write it all out because since this is such a long problem, I don't want to spend too much of your time. But let me explain line by line exactly what we're doing. So in the initialize function, uh, we are given a parent array, as I mentioned, and we're just going to be storing that as a member variable. And we also want to be able to know which nodes are locked and which nodes are not locked, right? So we'll just use a hash map for that. You could use an array if you want. Actually, now that I think about it, we could just use an array. So the way I'll do this is just initialize every value in the locked to uh, a none, meaning it's not locked yet. And the size of this will just be the size of the parent that we're given, right? Parent, the length of the parent is basically how many nodes we're given in the input. So this is how we'll implement locked, right? An array or a hash map for each node. We want to be able to tell if it's locked or not. And if it's not locked, this will be none. If it is locked, this will be the value of the user that did lock the node. That covers that. Now, next we have the child hash map because we, will, we also want to know for each node, what is its list of children, right? Initially, uh, this is just some Python magic. If you're not familiar with Python, all I'm doing is for every single node that we're given in the input, I'm saying initially it has an empty list of children. And then with this below for loop, what I'm doing is actually going through every node in parent and then basically setting its child, right? So for a node i, we know its parent is parent of index i, right? So then we can say that parent of index i has a child who is i, right? We're just doing the reverse of what parent is right now. And this child uh, array, which is pretty easy to initialize with just a single loop, as you can see, is going to make our life so much easier when we're trying to go through all of the descendants of a node. And I won't go over too much of the lock and unlock. I think this is not too difficult. If a node has been locked, then obviously we can't lock it again. So we're just going to return false. If a node is not locked, then we're going to lock it by the user that's trying to lock it right now, right? User is an input parameter. So this node num is locked by this user. And then we return true because we successfully did it. Same with unlock. Only the user who locked the node is allowed to unlock it. So if this num has not been locked by the input user, we return false because this user cannot unlock it. But if that's not the case, meaning this user is the one who locked the node, then we will unlock it by setting it to none or null or whatever value you want to use. We'll do that and then we'll return true saying yes, it was successfully unlocked. And now let's scroll down a bit for the actual interesting stuff, the upgrade function. So this is a two piece function. So this first loop is when we're going up to our ancestor. So we're starting at num and we're checking and we're, we're going to keep going until we reach negative one. Why did I use negative one? Because that's the parent of the root node. Once we get to that, we know we can stop, right? Because we can't go any higher than the root node. And what we're going to be checking are is any of these uh, nodes among the ancestors locked because if any of them are locked including the num itself right because you can see this loop i is starting at num if it's locked we also have to return false or if any of its ancestors are locked we also return false but if that's not the case then we're going to set i equal to its parent and then keep going up that chain of links right we're going to go up every single ancestor if any of them are locked return false otherwise we exit the for loop so now we know none of the ancestors are locked. That's good. Now let's make sure that at least one of the descendants is locked. So how are we going to do that? We're going to have a locked count, which is initially going to be zero. We haven't counted any locked nodes. We're going to have a queue because we're going to be going breadth first search style, right? We're going to be going through each child, each level by level. And that queue is initially going to be initialized with just num. And what we're going to do is pop from the queue each time. And we're going to check, is that node that we just popped, is it locked? If it is locked, then we're going to unlock it, right? Because that's what the upgrade function is about. It's about unlocking all of the descendants. So we unlock it and then increment the locked count. So then if we exit the loop, we will know that at least one node was locked and we unlocked it. And this next part is also just a Python function you might not be familiar with. We know that this node n might have some children. We can find those children with self.child at n. That'll be a list of children. With q.extend, we're basically taking all of those children, adding it to the queue. So then when we go to the next loop, we can pop the next child. 
And so by the time this loop executes, we will have gone through all descendants. Now we want to know, did we find any locked nodes or not? Is it greater than zero or not? If it is greater than zero, what can we do? Well, originally, remember this upgrade function was about not only unlocking the descendants, but also locking the given node num that we were given by the user that is the second parameter, right? We wanted to lock this num by this user only if this condition was true we check if it's true and then do the operation and remember we only want to return true if we actually performed this operation so we'll return true if this condition is true if this condition is not true we will return false so that was quite a mouthful and I don't think any particular part of this problem is that crazy it's just trying to put all of the pieces together it's definitely a long problem so I really hope that this was helpful let me run it to make sure that it works and as you can see below yes it was accepted it might not be the most efficient and it definitely might not be the most elegant. I look forward to seeing what other people came up with, but I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel, and hopefully, I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.